Hi, and welcome back to our development vlog. I'm Tom, the lead designer from Antler Studios. We are currently working on our first major title, Project Grove. In this video, we're going to have a bit more of an overview of the current game, as well as a deeper look into how we design open world puzzles. So, the game. Project Grove is a first person puzzle platformer where you play as aging alchemist Edric Tate and his plucky robot companion Elpen. Explore the forest of Dakuma, crafting new potions to gain new powers and much more. Could you tell? I've said that a couple times over the past two years. Project Grove is set in a steampunk empire, one which covers most of the world. The empire has been afflicted with a horrific disease, which has been causing people to grow vine-like spikes all over their skin. The major corporation Potentium has employed you, a famed, if not somewhat dated, alchemist to explore the forest of Dakuma in the search for a cure. The world is really fun to talk about, and we may do so in future videos. However, the main game revolves around Edric and Elpen, the two lead characters. You play as Edric, an aging inventor who is the lead researcher on the etheric power that it drove forward the recent technological boom in the Empire. He is also a traditionally trained alchemist, but has used his knowledge for the advancements of science rather than being stuck in the old ways like many others. He is a self-driven character who is in Dakuma for his own needs, to find his next adventure and maybe his last discovery. Elpen is his plucky robot companion found aboard the airship. Elpen is immediately taken with Edric and becomes fiercely loyal very quickly. Whilst being a machine, Elpen shows a great capacity for emotion and empathy even when unable to understand some of the finer points of Edric's sarcasm. I've used the beginning of this video to hopefully give a bit more context to Project Grove, but now we move on to the meat and potatoes of this video and our game, which is the level structure. We are trying to achieve a real open world experience and feel to this game, while still having clear puzzle platformer elements. This was definitely one of the hard elements to get right in terms of the high level design. To show you how we've achieved it currently, First, the technical side. We use Unreal's seamless level transitions with streaming volumes in our persistent level. Each area is its own map, which is loaded in and out depending on player position. This causes some problems with like levels popping in and such things like that. Eventually, we'll be improving on these things with stand-in fake distant levels so the players can see the whole area from a distance. This should give the better feel of the whole world and will help players understand the environment in terms of pathfinding but as well as trying to explore into the distance and getting that adventure feel. Our game structure allows us to have more in-depth puzzles whilst not breaking the player's opportunity to experiment. We lock off areas with natural bottlenecks. This means we can make sure players have certain abilities and understanding of a mechanic or potions before they enter an area of gameplay. We want this to make sure players do not feel like they're being locked off through some invisible barrier but rather that they're gaining the ability to explore further through their own efforts. Within areas, these bottlenecks become non-linear, and depending on what players craft and what potions they have with them, they can explore areas both in different orders and in different ways. Another element of structure that's really important to us is the idea of re-exploration. This has to be done carefully, as forcing players to go back to places they've already been is sometimes deemed as less exciting. But we want players to go back to these areas and find new ways of exploring them to get different collectibles and ingredients. This also heavily links to our quest system, which helps players choose where they want to go. Speaking of, the main point of quests is to guide and prompt players' exploration. We want players to find their own way through environments as well as puzzles. This can be done by approaching a puzzle in a different way or by just having a different loadout of potions. But sometimes we need to direct players, point them in a direction or make sure they experience a certain section of narrative. We make sure this happens through quests. Some quests are more linear experiences, similar to a lot of adventure games, and some are repeatable or non-linear ones that players can choose to go on in order to gain ingredients. All of these features link back to a major design problem we've had with this game, which is pathfinding. The open world, as well as heavy use of vertical space, where players can move up and down very directly, has led to a lot of players not knowing where to go. Most games in the adventure world as well as lots of others, use environmental cues to lead players, such as beaten paths, thick undergrowth which shows players shouldn't go in a certain direction, or level design which leads a player's eyes with natural arrows and rocks pointing the way. Sometimes these are more heavy-handed, 
such as runes or glyphs or symbols on walls that might tell players that they need to go a certain direction. Whilst we do employ some if not all of these methods in places, we felt like we needed something more because of the non-linear nature of the game, as well as the heavy use of verticality in our level designs. So we use these roots, coming out of the main elements of each level, the Flora Magica. These provided a sort of canon pathway for players to follow. This canon pathway meant players who didn't want to explore as much or wanted to get to the next section of gameplay as quickly as possible had sort of suggested pathways. We love players who do wacky things. We've had testers complete 30 minute demos in 40 seconds by doing crazy stuff. But we also understand that a lot of people like structure in their games and don't want to be left abandoned in the forest. So we make sure those players have cues to look out for. The last topics I want to talk about in this video are potions and flora magica. I'm sure throughout this video you would have noticed words like abilities, powers and potions. These potions, which players craft throughout the game, are how we unlock new ways of exploring as well as new areas. They can vary from abilities to see in the dark, fall from great heights without dying, making plants grow and turning water into ice, just to mention a few. Potions generally don't just have one use. These potions often have a combination of abilities, so each one on its own vastly changes the experience of exploring Dacoma. Potions are crafted mainly using the ingredients harvested from Flora Magica. These are the main objectives and goal of each zone. Players will need to purify the rock barrier around Flora and then collect the ingredients. As mentioned before, purifying the rock barrier involves following the Flora routes, which are the main guides for each of the zones. Once back in the airship, Edric can combine these ingredients in different ways, alongside Ether, which I won't cover in this video, in order to craft potions. Edric can choose up to three potions to bring with him, so there's an element of choice and agency when it comes to how you play. This loadout can only be changed in the airship, so when exploring or re-exploring areas, players will need to think carefully about what they bring and what abilities they want. This gives an element of playstyle, allowing players to explore in their own way. All of these elements culminate together to make what we think is a really amazing open world experience. Designers looking to make something more open world like Project Grove should be thinking about these key themes of pathfinding as we really think that elements like this is what makes an open world game fun. Players not knowing where to go or what to do, in our opinion, is what makes these sort of games not fun. So think about questing, pathfinding, directionality and how players are gonna move through your game in a fluid way. We still have a long way to go with it. It's not perfect in Project Grove yet, um, but these are the sort of themes that we're thinking about and moving towards improving. And I hope you enjoyed this discussion and are thinking about open world games in a slightly different way. Whilst they're hard for indie devs to achieve, they're not impossible if you make sure you limit yourself to a reasonable scope. If you have any more questions about these sort of topics, don't hesitate to ask in our Discord or in the comments down below. And that really wraps up what I want to talk about in this video. Next time, we'll get back onto the more normal schedule of talking about what we've been doing in the last few weeks. We'll be updating our free demo on Steam very soon. If you like the look of Project Grove, make sure you go check it out on Steam and Wishlist. Thanks so much for watching and make sure if you like this sort of content that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.